Hello and welcome to my channel, I'm the Bearded Techie, and today I got a new tutorial for you guys. But first I want to go ahead and thank today's sponsor, me. Because I don't have sponsors, baby. It's only me. But if you do want to reach out and sponsor me, feel free to contact me at any time. Hopefully that doesn't sound too desperate. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and keep moving forward. I wanna go ahead and mention that I'm making this tutorial because when I was searching for a tutorial about a couple weeks ago, I couldn't really find one that was up to date for 2020 because the ones that I found were a few years old and Epos Vox made a great one about three years ago, but it only really applies to the older versions of Plex. Now, if you're running on a current version of Plex, that tutorial is not going to apply here. So that's why I decided to make a new tutorial that is updated for the newer Plex versions, because on the older Plex versions, you could just change where the metadata folder location was from their web user interface in the, in the settings, but that's no longer available. It's no longer an option in there. It's not even in the web user interface anymore, but you still can change the transcoder cache folder location from the Plex user interface, which I will also be talking about how to do that uh, towards the end of the video. But first we're gonna go ahead and move the metadata folder. Now we're going to need to make some changes in the registry editor. Now you need to be careful and not delete anything that was already there or you know add a bunch of stuff, you know, because the registry editor is very powerful and you can damage things if you don't know what you're doing or if you change the wrong thing. So be careful and just follow along with my instructions exactly as I give them so that you don't accidentally delete something that doesn't need to be deleted or add something that doesn't need to be added and damage your system. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first step you're gonna to need to do is get onto the computer or server in which this Plex server is running. Now, mine is running on a server which I actually keep in a closet. So I'm gonna go ahead and remote into it right now. Now, I run Windows Server 2019 for my server, but it's almost identical to Windows 10 and the process to get the metadata folder moved is exactly identical for Windows Server 2019 as it is for Windows 10. So don't worry about anything like that. So first step is going to be exiting Plex. If it's running, go ahead and shut it down. It's gonna be here in the bottom right on the system tray. If you don't see it, go ahead and click this up arrow to see if it's in there. And if you don't ever, if you don't see it all after that, it's probably not running. Now go ahead and click exit. Next thing we're gonna do is hit Windows key and then type in services. And we're going to open that up. Now that we have services open, we're gonna go ahead and find the Plex update service and we're going to go ahead and stop that. Now, also, just as a quick note, I wanna go ahead and say thank you to Otto Kerner. He's a moderator over on the Plex forums. He wrote the original guide that I'm basing this video on. And if you guys wanna go ahead and reference that at any time, I've posted the link to that guide in the description below. And I wanna just thank him for the hard work he put into this guide because it is well-written and it works. So it's always nice when you get a, a quality guide that is accurate and actually works. So thank you to him and let's go ahead and keep moving. Now that you have the Plex service stopped and the actual server shut down, we're going to go ahead and copy the metadata folder to the new location. So first we're gonna to need to create the location. So you're gonna to go to whatever dedicated drive or whatever new drive you wanna move the folder to and you're gonna create a folder on that drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder called Plex Meta. Now you could title this folder whatever you want, but make sure that you do create a folder for the metadata to go within. You don't wanna put the metadata in the root of the drive just because it could cause some issues. So now that we have the Plex um, meta folder that I've created, we're gonna go ahead and copy the, med the Plex server metadata folder and paste it within the folder we've just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new file explorer window. I'm gonna go to local disk, 
I'm gonna go to users, and then you're gonna click on whatever your username is, and then you're gonna go to app data, local, and then it should be right here. It says Plex Media Server. Now go ahead and copy it. Make sure you don't cut it because just in case something goes wrong, you don't wanna lose that data and then have to have your Plex server repopulate all those different posters and lyrics and uh, you know thumbnails. So just copy it for now. If everything works in the end, you can go ahead and come back and delete it. So now that it's copied, I'm gonna go back to my uh, data my Plex data drive. I'm gonna go within the new folder I've just created and I'm going to paste the metadata folder. Now, depending on the size of your collection, this could take quite a while. Unfortunately for me, I have a quite a small collection right now because when I was transferring my drives from the Linux server to Windows Server 2019, I accidentally uh, formatted my drive without thinking and lost my entire collection. So I'm slowly building that back up, but it is getting built back up. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. The next thing we're going to do is hit windows key once again and type in reg edit. And there it is. We're going to go ahead and open up the registry editor. Now make sure you're careful. Uh, once again, you can damage things within this and that wouldn't be good. So just follow right along. So you're going to go to H key current user. Then you're going to go to software. Then oopsie, you're going to go to Plex Inc. And you're going to drop that down and you're going to Plex, click Plex media server. Now, once you're in here, you're going to right click new string value. So once you have that created, you're going to go ahead and rename that to local app data path. And once you've done that, you're going to go right click and modify. And here in value data, you're going to try type in the path of the new location of the metadata. Now, we're going to copy this folder path right here. See, I'm not going all the way into the Plex media server folder. I'm going just right here to that folder we created. So this is what we're gonna put in there. Just like that. It should not say E Plex Meta slash Plex Media Server. You're gonna wanna just do the folder above Plex Media Server and not the actual Plex Media Server. So it's gonna look just like this and we're gonna put a slash just like that and you're gonna click OK. Another thing to note right here is make sure that you're not using a networked drive that could cause stability issues as well. And make sure that you're not putting your metadata folder within a Plex library. You're not putting this metadata folder like in your movies folder or your shows folder or your music folder. Make sure it is, it's in its own dedicated folder and preferably on a dedicated drive. Now, once you've got that done, you can go ahead and close registry editor. You can close file explorer. You can, and then restart the system. Now, while we're waiting on the server to restart, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about why it's good to move your transcoder cache from your system drive to also a dedicated drive. Now, if you have a dedicated SSD that you're also using for Plex metadata, it's probably a good idea to also use that SSD for your Plex backups, as well as your transcoder cache. And this is important, especially if your system drive is on a hard disk with a spinning platter that has moving parts because those traditionally are not very fast at all. So it's a good idea to keep your transcoder cache on a fast drive so that your transcodes don't get slowed down or inhibited by the read and write speeds of that hard disk. So the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is move our transcoder cache location. Now I've already moved mine, but I'm gonna go ahead and walk through the steps and show you guys where I've located mine and how to change that within the Plex web user interface. So let's go ahead and see if my server has uh, finished restarting. Okay, here we go. We're back in. 
go ahead and close that. So let's go ahead and get Plex running. There it is. Plex is now running. Let's open up Plex. Now to test whether our metadata move has worked, let's go ahead and do this before we get into the transcoder cache step. Let's go ahead to make sure that our migration has worked and it is functioning. Go over to your local disk, go back to users, your username, app data, local, Plex Media Server, right click on it. This time we're gonna cut and we're gonna go ahead and paste that to a different location. Okay, so now we're back in our local folder, so it's not in here anymore. So let's go ahead and go and let's just refresh one of our libraries. And make sure that everything is working. Okay, good. Cool. We've refreshed it. Now let's go ahead and look back in our app data folder. And you can see here Plex has not created a new Plex media server folder within our app data. So that's how we know it's now using the new folder that we've created on the new drive. Because if it didn't take or it wasn't working and I refresh the metadata, it would have created another Plex media server folder here in the app data location and we would have had to have gone back and see if we made a mistake somewhere. So now that we can see that here in the app data local folder that there is no new Plex media server folder that's been created, we know that the new drive location is working and the Plex media metadata is being stored there. So now that we've confirmed that, let's keep moving forward to the transcoder cache location. Now you can see here I've created a folder called Plex, or I've, excuse me, transcoder cache, and this is on the same drive as my Plex metadata. And you're just gonna create a folder called transcoder cache. You'll go into it and you go over here, you'll right click copy the drive path. Then you'll go back to your Plex web user interface. You go to settings, you'll scroll down to transcoder. Now, right here, it has transcoder temporary directory. Now, this is where you're going to put in the new transcoder cache folder path. Now, you can see I've already got mine in there, but I'll go ahead and paste it again. And once you've got your new cache folder path pasted in there, go ahead and save changes. Now that that's done, your transcoder cache has been moved. Now, if you also want to move the location of your Plex backups folder, which is probably also a good idea, go over here to scheduled tasks. And you can see here, you can change the directory in which your Plex backups are stored. And you can see here also that I've created a folder on my dedicated drive just for Plex backups. And you'll create that folder and you'll paste the folder path into this backup directory location. Go down, paste, oopsie. So you'll just paste it in there, save your changes, just like that. And you'll wanna make sure that your transcoder cache has a dedicated folder, your metadata is gonna have a dedicated folder, and your backups are gonna have a dedicated folder. Having them all three on the same drive is not a problem, just make sure that they have their own dedicated folders within that drive. Okay, so that's that's it guys, that's how you do it. Um, there is a possibility that uh, Plex update service may not work correctly after you make these changes within registry editor. Now there's a optional step that you can take that is within the written guide, which I'm not gonna go over because it wasn't a problem for me. I never had to make this change. Plex update service works just fine for me on my system. And I don't even really have the registry entry that they go into talking about changing. So that's not even in my system. So I wasn't able to even practice with it because there is there isn't even a directory within registry editor for me to make that specific change that he goes into detail about talking about so if you guys have a problem with the plex update service after you make the metadata move 
go ahead and follow this guy's guide. It's all the way at the bottom. It's an optional step. And the guide is very detailed. It's very helpful and it's easy to follow along with. And like I said, if you guys want to go ahead and reference that guide at any time during this tutorial, it is linked in the description below. Okay, guys, thanks very much for following along in this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I hope you guys can use this to your benefit. And I hope you guys Keep your Plex servers up and running as smooth as possible. Plex is an amazing service. I'm so happy that I have it. And uh, if you guys liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget, if you didn't like this video, hit that thumbs down button. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Have some confidence. Go ahead and hit that thumbs down button. That's okay. And if you have any questions about the server, the hardware, the software, the process, if you have any trouble along the way, uh, post it in the comments below and I will respond quickly and quickly, quickly and respectfully. And I'll do my best to help you. And it's my pleasure. So once again, thanks. I'm the Bearded Techie. Signing out.